We're going to go ahead and get underway. Um, and I am very, very honored that we have a FERC Commissioner, Federal Energy Regulatory Commission uh, representative here today. And it is uh, a great privilege to have Commissioner John Norris with us. Um, I know that he has had an, an unbelievably busy schedule. And so we are very pleased that to know that he came because he also has really been providing a lot of leadership at FERC in terms of looking at a clean energy economy and how we can move to do a better job with regard to renewables here in the U.S. Commissioner Norris. Thanks, Carol. Great to be here with you all. I, uh, this is a little, I'm a little, un Carol characterizes my schedule as busy, and this happens today happens to be crazy. As a commissioner, it ebbs and flows in terms of busyness, but I'm doing something rare today. Usually I like to come to these type of events and be where you're at and, 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 and listen and learn, but today I have just a moment, a few moments to stop by and share some thoughts with you all, and hopefully I'll get some thoughts generated for the panel coming up that you can uh, ask them the tough questions and not me. But uh, great to be with you. Uh, to to uh, address the topic of energy efficiency and grid technology. And let me start, you know, I go to all these different events to, uh, to talk with folks in the moment, oftentimes not panels, I was yesterday down in Asheville, North Carolina. And it, all the panelists always have a slideshow with their own commercial of their, what, what entity they're from and how many employees they have and what's their capital base and all that stuff. Well, I'm starting to feel a little inadequate at first, so I came up with my own infomercial. Uh, to start a lot of my uh, presentations these days. So here, here is a, here's my infomercial. And it's around the 2050 carbon goals. We often talk about the need to reduce our carbon emissions. I think the administration's goal is by 80 percent of the 2005 numbers by 2050 in order to avert a, a, a damaging level of climate change. And that has been kind of the standard line goal people understand and accept, but I'm trying to put a little context into 80% reductions of 2005 carbon emissions by 2050. What's that really mean? I'm just going to go a little bit deeper in my infomercial. And that is, in 2005, we emitted 2,381 million metric tons of carbon emissions. In 2000, now 2011 figures, what's that mean? So to go from 2005, 2,381 million metric tons, an 80% reduction by 2050 means we can have 405 million metric tons of carbon emissions in our electric generation. What's that mean? In 2011, we generated just under 4,000 billion kilowatt hours of electricity and generated 2,011 excuse me, 2,166 million metric tons of carbon emissions. By 2050, we're expecting to need just north of 5,000 billion kilowatt hours for demand for electricity. But we can only yield 405 or produce 405 million metric tons of, of carbon emissions. The 2011 figures I gave you of those 2,166 million metric tons of emissions, 1,718 of that came from coal, 411 of that came from natural gas, and just a smidgen from oil and, and, uh, and biofuels. So we know by 2050 we can't have any, unless, we, unless there's successful carbon capture and sequestration, if we're going to meet those goals, there's no room for base load coal generation in 2050. There's no room for natural gas base load generation in 2050. We'll need those 400 million metric tons just for load following for intermittent resources if we hit our goals of, or what NREL says, as potential of 80 percent renewables by 2050. Now, here's the point for all that information. I'm sorry if my numbers got a little jumbled there. I hope you followed them all. The point is it's going to be very challenging to go to 405 million metric tons of emissions in 2050 and still meet our electricity demand. But one of the best ways we can begin to mitigate the impact of meeting those goals is through aggressive energy efficiency and demand side management. The more we can reduce that projected 5,000 billion kilowatt hours of electricity demand lower, 
it puts less pressure on us in terms of our generation fleet and what the makeup is. So that, I believe, is, is the goal for energy efficiency and demand side management. It's overall reduction of energy consumption. It's reducing peak consumption and our, and our need for capacity. And it's also a very valuable tool for balancing the grid and providing ancillary services. So how do we do that? It's two key things. One is by continuing the advancement of technologies that, that are enabling us to use less energy to do the same thing, and also to utilize the sh shaving of our peak or reducing our cons energy consumption at t key times um, to provide that to the grid for valuable services. So we have to maintain the technology advances we've, we've maintained in the last several decades in this country. I liken it to this. Jimmy Carter really got us started on this track in my mind, at least in my generation. His idea of energy efficiency or conservation was, here's an idea, everyone put on a sweater. Right? What a novel idea. We could save energy by conserving by putting on a sweater. Now, I don't know, a decade or so later we came up with the idea, well, let's put those sweaters around our water heaters and have greater efficiency in our water heaters. And now, just recently, PJM is able to have interactive water heaters that they can use for the stored energy to help balance the grid or frequency response provision of services that provide real value uh, to that stored energy in water heaters. That's a track of the evolution in my mind of what technology, ha where it's been and what it enables us to do. The key though are policies that enable those technologies to capture the full value of that energy efficiency and that demand side management. So it's not just the value of reduced energy consumption, which is what Jimmy Carter's sweater would be, but to provide the full range of values that those technologies that interface with energy consumption and our energy system and elect electricity system to capture the values of those. So some examples of that. Um, we need to enable uh, consumers to have price responsive demand for electricity. So there's price sensitivity. We need to enable demand side management and energy efficiency to be able to bid into the capacity markets to capture that value from energy efficiency, demand side management. We need, we need demand side management and demand response and energy efficiency to be able to bid in to providing ancillary services like frequency response. The more we can more we can attach and recognize and realize the value of energy efficiency measures, the more we cost justify the investment in energy efficiency. The more we cost justify the investment in energy efficiency, the more investment will take place in the technologies that provide additional means of achieving energy, energy efficiency and demand side management. The one example I cited, PJM with interactive water heaters is able to bid into the ancillary service market, the frequency response they can provide for that, that energy stored in that water heater. Another example in PJM is, uh, is the, are the, um, the subway services in Southeast Pennsylvania Transportation, Transportation District where they are able to capture the energy that's generated by the braking metro system, store that electricity into batteries, and then reutilize that elect the electricity for acceleration services and then also the excess electricity from those, that battery storage from capturing the uh, electricity gener generated by braking, selling that to the grid to provide ancillary services when the grid needs energy fast and on that grid to balance our electricity. It's a way to add value to energy efficiency and demand response that triggers more investment in technology and the provision of energy services, energy efficiency services and demand side management. Capturing that value, I think, is really critical in the capacity market auctions. So how do we structure our markets or what policies do we put in place for our capacity auctions that value energy efficiency and demand response? We just last year, we did a rulemaking at FERC where we added value to storage capability by compensating it for the value it provides in terms of accuracy and speed of response for providing frequency regulation that gives an added value to storage of energy, which can capture energy at unneeded times produced by intermittent generation sources and increase the value of that energy. Even through our recent order 1000, 
we provide in the planning process for the transmission ser services for the planning regions uh, an avenue for consideration of non-transmission alternatives in planning our needs for the build of, of our, our electricity, electricity system going forward. That adds value to things like demand response and energy efficiency when you put it in the equation of, of uh, the computation for what's the most efficient way to meet our energy needs. It may not be transmission if we can provide it through other alternatives like energy efficiency and demand response. So it's critical that we create a fair and equal market opportunities for demand-side management tools such as energy efficiency, so that they get the value of not just reduced energy use, which you as a consumer save if you lose less energy, but if you can also sell the value of those balancing services, those ancillary services, those capacity reduction uh, needs uh, into the marketplace to capture the value for, for those, uh, those technologies that enable us to do that, we'll, we'll continue us down this path of increasing energy efficiency and reducing our need for generation and the resulting carbon emissions. And finally, we are in a, I think, a, a moment in time that's very critical because a lot of our infrastructure in this country on the electric system is fairly aged. We are in a transition of building a, the system now. When you make investments in this sector, you intend those investments to have a payoff of beyond 30 years. We're still living off generation facilities, transmission facilities, distribution facilities that were built way beyond 30 years ago. What we're investing in now will be here in 2050. And a lot of the conversation right now are how many gas plants do we build and how many pipelines do we need to provide the gas service to keep those generation facilities going in the decades beyond concerns me because the price of the gas is changing a lot of the economics of these investment decisions, particularly in energy efficiency and demand side management, that it's critical now that we, we find the value in those. Um, and we find those values through energy savings, capacity markets, ancillary services, non-transmission alternatives. The one key missing value point uh, is still the, the issue that, that perplexes me and, and and it causes me concern about our future, and that is we've not valued carbon. Um, and so as we rush to deploy new pipelines and new gas fire generation that we know we can't use as baseload in 2050 if we want to meet those carbon reduction goals, we will have assets in the ground in pipeline and gener generation facilities that those people who've made those investments in those facilities expect return on those investments into that time period of which it becomes questionable whether we can use them or not. Hence the importance for fully developing and realizing energy efficiency and demand side management now in this environment is critical because it means we will make less of those long-term investment decisions and capital expenditures that we'll be stuck with um, by, uh, by, by preventing the need for them. So you're on the right track here. I know you're all in this room because you have concerns about this. You're on the right track here with no, recognizing the importance of energy efficiency and, and managing our demand side resources. And I just encourage you to, to keep pressing um, Congress and the other policymakers to continue to enact policies that will enable us to capture the value, but also enact policies that value carbon so that we can recognize the value of energy efficiency more appropriately in our energy system. So thanks for being here. Thanks for your uh, interest in this issue. And Carol, Thank turn you. it back to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Commissioner Norris. And I, I, I think that this was such a terribly important message uh, that we really all do need to take to heart because the decisions that are made today will have a profound impact upon our future. And it becomes ever more difficult to, um, to deal with the changes that really need to be made if we are not making sound investments today. Um, so I hope that um, everyone um, thinks about what Commissioner Norris said very carefully and that indeed um, it's a message that I think that 
more and more policymakers need to hear so that we try to make as good um, a decision as possible um, as we think about energy policy going forward.